people don't buy the best products. They buy the products that they understand the fastest. That is why it's your job as a coach to learn how to package and sell your offer in a way that's so clear that moves you from the nice to have bucket in people's minds to the must have bucket in their minds. You cannot be a luxury in people's minds. You need to be a must have. I don't care if you sell self love, if you sell things that you feel like are not essential. It doesn't matter what your niche is. I have one of my clients, Rebecca, who just messaged me literally a few hours ago and said, I just sold my highest paying premium offer. No one has ever paid me this much. And she lives here in Israel, by the way, and she's making bank, selling these offers, selling her mastermind, and she teaches self-love. Welcome to Exposed, the show that gives you the raw truth about what it really takes to build a multi-million dollar coaching business and a life that you're obsessed with. I'm your host, Juliana Garcia, marketing strategist and master coach. And after building a multi-million dollar business from scratch, each week, I want to take you behind the scenes with actionable business strategies and profound mindset shifts to help you create wealth from the inside and out so that you can become the exception to the rule in the coaching industry. I'm exposing the uncomfortable truths, the failures, and the topics that most podcasts don't dare to talk about. So let's dive into today's episode. Oh my God, you guys, I cannot believe I'm saying this right now. We are ranking number 12 in the entrepreneurship category on Apple iTunes. Sandwiched between Boss Babe and Dan Martell and some of the most epic thought leaders currently in the online space and entrepreneurship. I cannot say thank you enough to every single one of you who decided to share, to rate, to review, because without you, we wouldn't have made it here. Thank you to my team because we went through so much to create this result. And I want to share with all of you something in the spirit of being exposed that this launch has not been easy. We have gone through so many challenges, figuring out new things, new processes. My team is learning new things. And when you plan, you can plan for the first time, but then you have to plan for the things that are not going to go according to plan because they're always going to happen. And I just want to say thank you to my team because the day of the launch, Some people were not aware that we needed all three episodes dropped on the same day, which is the understanding that I was under. That's why I rushed to record all three episodes. And then one of my team members was like, I don't see three episodes there. And then I'm like, guys, where are the episodes? They're like, we're not meant to do that today. I'm like, oh my God. And the attitude, the can-do attitude made everything flow so effortless. Everything got done. And so the lesson that I'm learning from that is make sure that you work with people that are flexible, that have a yes can attitude. When you hire anyone, an agency, a contractor, ask them, how do they show up in moments when things don't go according to plan? That's such an important question for anyone to ask their team members before they hire them, because it's really going to make a difference in the moments when the rubber meets the road. So I just want to say thank you. I'm so honored and I can't wait to dive into today's episode. So in today's topic, we're going to talk about the difference between amateur marketing and premium marketing. And this is very important to know because most coaches think that selling a premium offer is hard. Maybe you think that. You probably have heard on the internet people say, nobody's buying premium offers anymore. Selling premium offers is greedy. And what happens is maybe you build up the courage to raise your prices, but then you get a couple of no's and then you feel discouraged and you go back to selling the offer that is comfortable, that you know is maybe not premium, but you're going to get a couple of clients here and there, maybe buying a few sessions, buying a couple of courses, whatever it is that feels comfortable for you to sell instead of really selling the thing that's going to take you to the next level. So no matter what income bracket you're in, when you start questioning yourself and questioning your offers and questioning your price, you end up overcomplicating your marketing and your business. And so you end up in two different emotional states. One is freeze in a free state because you're overwhelmed with the amount of content that you think you need to create in order to keep up with everyone on the internet, in order to sell one offer, whether it's premium or not, or you end up 
feeling burnt out because you are overproducing 21 reels every single day to sell one thing and you're feeling burned out. So when you operate in an amateur way in your marketing and in your business, you are going to end up in either one of those camps, feeling overwhelmed and kind of frozen, not doing much because you're overwhelmed with the amount of information of what you should do, what you shouldn't do, or overproducing to try to keep up and feeling like you're burned out and things are not converting because the content that you're creating is not focused on high potency, is focused on high production. And we're going to talk about the difference between the two and what that means. Now, both of these things are a problem because we need to find ways to make your marketing sustainable. If we cannot make your marketing sustainable, you are going to end up resenting your business. You're going to end up second guessing yourself every few months, having a mental breakdown, thinking something works, but then it doesn't. And then you won't have stability in your business. And what I teach you inside of all of my containers and in this podcast is designed to help you create sustainability in your business. Now, you're probably wondering, but Juliana, people are buying differently these days. The market has changed. And let me tell you something. Yes, the market is always changing. And right now, what has changed is the level of sophistication that buyers have before they make a decision. So our job as coaches is to elevate our marketing to meet that level of sophistication to support the buyer's decision. And when I say sophistication, I don't mean complication. In fact, I mean the opposite. The most important thing that we can do right now is to make our marketing very simple because with the noise of the internet where everyone's trying to sell, everyone's trying to stand out, what is going to stand out is everyone or the people and the coaches who stand out are the people who are the most clear. Because here's the truth. People don't buy the best products. People buy the products that they can understand the fastest. So if you're a coach and you don't know how to clearly communicate the value of your offer in a simple way, in a way that's going to land with your ideal clients quickly, then you are going to feel undervalued and overlooked. And so your job as a coach is to simply help your clients remember you as a must have. I need to have this person in my life. I need them to help me. They're the person for me. I want them to help me versus, oh, that sounds like a luxury. That sounds like a nice to have. I don't really need it right now. And that's the power of premium marketing, marketing that creates that category of one in the minds of your audience so that people think about you as the go-to person for the problem that they have. So let's talk about the amateur mistakes that coaches make in their marketing. Number one, you are being overly inspirational instead of making offers that sell. (laughs) What I mean by that is people come to you and they tell you, you inspire me so much. You are amazing. Oh my God. They save your posts. They comment. They tell you you're amazing, but they're not buying from you. They may be following you for a long time and they're still on the fence. The reason why that's happening is because you are sharing lessons and stories that might be inspirational, but you are not bridging the gap between where your client is right now and where they want to be and how you can help them get there. You're talking about yourself and that's really cute. It can create a lot of likability. That's great, but it's a very important part in your marketing that is essential for people to not just see you as a friend or as an inspiring person on the internet, but see you as somebody that can guide them through a transformation. And that is to create a gap. Where are they at? Where do they want to be? How you can help them? And then make a solid offer and an invitation. (laughs) This is something that I see coaches miss on their posts, on their content so much. They just say, if this was helpful, send me a DM and we can chat about how we can work together. That's not a call to action, you guys. That is not at all considered a call to action. That is just a random sentence that it's kind of saying, okay, thanks, bye. It's not even anything. You're not making an offer. So if you're sharing powerful stories, like for example, the stories that I shared in the Expose Your Truth Challenge that I created is an opt-in that you can get for free. In case you haven't used it, I give you 30 prompts for 30 days 
to expose one truth about yourself every single day. And I show you the principles that you need in order to create content that not only shares your stories and is inspiration, but actually creates conversions. So in case you haven't downloaded it, make sure you do because it's free. The second mistake that coaches make that is amateur marketing is sharing thoughts, feelings that are unprocessed, that are coming from an unintegrated, reactive, dysregulated place. And so they think, oh, I just want to be raw and vulnerable. And what happens is you may get a lot of comments and likes on these types of posts, but the energy that you're coming from is not an energy of, I am here to guide you. The energy that you're coming from is hear me out and validate me. The energy that you want when you want to attract premium clients is an energy of, yeah, this is what I'm going through. This is what I've been through. Here are the lessons that I'm learning or here's what I'm noticing in the space. Let's say that you are a coach and you have thoughts about the online marketing world or the coaching space and you're feeling tired because every coach is doing the same thing. First of all, stop speaking to your haters because that's another marketing mistake. People who speak to their haters is speaking to people who are not their ideal clients. When you speak to your haters, you're essentially like a tabloid newspaper instead of being the New York Times for the Wall Street people. Like notice the difference in energy and in messaging. The emotion that you evoke in people's minds and bodies has to be one that's grounded if you want to attract premium clients. If you just want to cause some rockets on the online space and get some likes and validation and comments, please feel free to just share your unfiltered truths and all the things because you get to do whatever you want to do. That's going to get you likes. It's going to get you comments. It might get you people saying, yeah, like rile people up, but it's not going to get you buyers or the people that are going to follow you are going to follow you because they are also feeling the same energy of victimhood. And when you attract people in victimhood, you are going to have people who are going to have a lot of objections, who are going to ghost you, who are not going to be committed to the process. So what is the point of speaking to our haters or viewing our guts out on the internet when the energy that we're putting out is not the energy that we want to have in our space? It's just what we're feeling in the moment. So if you are feeling a lot of feelings in the moment, call your coach, call a friend, process it, sit with it, and ask yourself, How is this helpful to my audience? How can I share this in a way that's helpful to my audience? How can I add value to my people? How can I show up from a place of leadership in this whole topic that is really triggering or that I really feel empowered by or that I really feel lit up by? You can share your thoughts. You can share your feelings, but come from an empowered place because the energy that you're putting out through your marketing, it's going to attract a similar quality of client. The third mistake people make in their marketing that is very amateur is coming out of your certification or coming out of a retreat and a breakthrough ayahuasca ceremony, whatever you want, a conversation with a friend and start using very jargony terms in order to describe your experience or the problem that people have in their lives, your audience, your ideal clients. You are using expert language. And the expert language, the fluffy language, the coachy language, it's not something that lands with premium clients because that's not how they relate to their problem. They relate to their problem in their language, in the way that they think about it, that they experience it, the way they literally live and breathe it every single day. So I want you to really notice if your content isn't landing and it's not attracting clients, it is not getting traction. And by traction, I don't mean a bunch of likes and a bunch of comments because views, likes, and comments do not dictate the amount of money or applications that you can get from your content. (laughs) I get very little engagement in my post for somebody who makes multi-million dollars in her business. And it's something that it's never worried me because I know that my clients are lurkers and they're always watching. They never engage with my content but they always send the application when they're ready. So going back to being in the expert language and expert complex, you're using the jargon that is confusing for people. And we need to use language that people that you want to work with use on a day-to-day basis. And I'm going to go deeper into this topic in a minute. 
So I'm going to move on to the next thing. The next mistake that people make is they focus on overproducing content that is lazy and average. <laughs> and by lazy and average, I mean content that is focused on going viral, hopping on every trend that they see to get views or to grow their following instead of being focused on content that has potency. And I'm going to talk about what potency is in a minute. But content that is lazy is content that is designed to give people like tasters. And there is a place for that type of content in your marketing strategy, but it shouldn't be more than 20% of your marketing strategy. That is a content that's reaching new people. But what happens when you focus 80% of your marketing strategy on trying to go viral is that you, A, are going to maybe go viral one day, eventually, and attract the masses and have a bunch of followers, but these followers are not going to be buyers. Why? Because you've attracted them with free content and people want free stuff. So if you constantly build your account based on free tips and free things that people can have, then they're always going to expect you to give them free stuff. That's not a way to set the tone for the relationship in your account or with your personal brand. What is important is that you offer value, in this case, free tips, let's say, but that you focus majority of your content in really conversions. And we're going to talk about what that is in the premium marketing category. Now, the next mistake that people make that I want to go into, because I see so many coaches do this, is thinking that they need to sell with excitement, thinking that they need to hype people in their audience in order for them to buy. So the reason why excelling with excitement is an amateur mistake that people make in their marketing is because, number one, you're selling with hype and hype dies off quickly. You're pulling on people's fear of missing out. And what happens is that you're speaking to their fleeting emotions instead of their core desires. Hype dies off quickly, but core desires don't. So when you're selling to their fleeting emotions in the moment, don't miss out on this. Sign up right now because it's going to go away at any moment. Then what happens is that people may buy. Maybe they sign up for your masterclass, but they're not going to show up live. Maybe they sign up for your five-day training, but they're not going to show up to the five days or even do the work. Or even they might buy your premium offer, but they're going to think, oh, I don't actually want to do the work. They're not going to show up committed to creating the results because you use fear of missing out to push them into a buying decision that they actually did not want, that they actually did not feel they really needed. You push them into a buying decision that they regret, that they actually didn't want. It wasn't part of their core desire. So what happens is you're going to experience clients that are not going to show up powerfully in your containers. They're not going to do the work. They might want a refund or they're going to ghost you on their payments. That's what happens when you use excitement to sell with the fear of missing out. This leads me to the second reason as to why excitement is not required to sell. Listen, excitement is not sustainable for you or for your audience. You are not going to wake up every single day excited to talk about your offer. It's impossible. You are not a robot. You are a human being. There will be days when you're like, I don't want to talk about this. I'm not feeling excited about it. And so what are you going to do? Are you going to neglect your business or are you going to choose to show up for your business regardless of the lack of excitement that you're currently feeling? The reality is that majority of the time, you're not going to feel excited about things in your business. It's just the truth. So many people say, oh, you should feel amazing and delicious about everything in your business at all times. And the reality is that we don't. It's a business. There are a lot of things we want to do. Some days we don't want to do some others. But our commitment as business owners is to show up and nourish our business as if it was our child, as if it was our plant, whatever it is, our pet. We're not going to neglect it and not feed it and not water it because we don't feel like it. You might not want to take your dog out for a walk, but you're going to take your dog out for a walk because your dog needs to be walked. You made the decision to take care of this being, and now it's time to show up. So thinking that you need to feel excited in order for you to show up and sell is a mistake and is a myth. You can feel all the range of emotions. 
and still show up and sell because you're not waiting for excitement or inspiration in order to show up. When you wait for excitement and inspiration, you are going to be inconsistent in your marketing and you are going to feel like marketing is a chore. It's going to feel difficult. It's going to feel annoying. It's going to feel like it never flows because you're waiting for it to feel good. And it doesn't have to feel good in order to work. It's also not sustainable for your audience to always feel excited about what you're doing. You're expecting them to comment and to like your posts all the time. And so what if they don't? Are you waiting to source excitement and validation from the likes and comments that you get on your posts in order for you to feel excited to sell? That is not how it works. You get to show up first, whether you're excited or not, selling your offer in a premium way, which I'm about to tell you what that looks like. And from that place, you generate excitement for your audience. And even if they don't engage or if they don't like or comment on your posts, you don't make that mean anything about the possibility of your result. It just doesn't. These two things are separate. So it's really important that we learn to separate our feelings from our business. So many coaches blend the two. Oh, the uh, the way that I feel is the way that I'm going to choose to show up for my business. And that's what your results are inconsistent and why you don't have consistent cash months because you're treating your business with conditions. You're not unconditionally loving your business. So I want you to think about that. Every time that you feel like I'm not excited about this, I don't really feel like doing it today. Notice the conditionality that you're placing on the relationship between you and your business and then choose. If I were my business, how would I like to feel right now? And the last reason why excitement is not required to sell is because people who are premium clients don't actually give a shit how you feel or if you're excited about your offer. I had a client who was a peer and she's at the seven figure level and I remember her telling me, oh my God, Juliana, I only have 400 registrations for my webinar and normally I have 800 by now. So I don't know how to sell the value of my webinar because I don't have enough registrants. I feel embarrassed with the number of people that have signed up. I'm like, who cares about the number of people that have signed up? And she said, well, I always sell based on the excitement that I have about people joining and how many people are coming. And I said, like, why is that important to your clients? Who cares how many people are in the workshop? Like, who gives a shit? And she said, well, it matters because then they were going to think that this is something that they need to attend. I'm like, oh, my love. The reason why you're not getting more registrations is because you are not feeling excited about your current circumstance and you're waiting for your circumstance to get better in order for you to feel excitement. And that's not sustainable. And the reality is that premium clients don't care how many people join your webinar or not. What they care about is, is this going to solve my problem? Is this webinar or is this masterclass or is this five-day training or is this offer going to help me get from where I am to where I want to be, period? When you do that, you will not need to wait to feel excited about your offer for others to feel excited about it because you're going to be selling through value. So how do we solve all these problems? All of these leads me to the one solution required to solve all of these problems, and that is premium marketing. Premium marketing is marketing that sells based on value, not on cheap, fleeting emotions. And you have probably heard people say, sell value, give value to the world. But what people don't understand is what value actually means. Value is not giving five tips on how to do X, Y, Z. Value is not sharing a random story and getting a bunch of likes and comments. That is the superficial level of marketing that we were talking about. Premium marketing goes deeper. It has potency. It matches the level of sophistication that buyers now have when it comes to making a decision about a program, whether it's $500 or whether it's $50,000. So let's talk about what that looks like in premium marketing. Number one, instead of showing up as a hot mess online, sharing reactive feelings that you have not processed, that are not actually being helpful to your audience, you actually slow down, you sit with your emotions, you process the lessons, and from a leadership perspective, 
you share the lessons that you are learning that are helpful to your audience. The lessons don't have to be perfectly tied into a beautiful package bow, like, oh, this is what I'm going through and I'm perfect on the other side. You can be going through things in the midst of it, but in a premium way with elegant vulnerability, you can share what you're learning. And this is the question that I always want you to ask when you're sharing those posts that are feeling like very alive in you and very kind of like, intense in your body. After you slow down, after you write it down, ask yourself, is this helpful to my audience? The second thing that makes marketing premium is when it sells through value. And here's what I mean by value. It's marketing that matches the level of sophistication that people are currently having in the marketplace when it comes to making a buying decision. And the way we do that is not by giving five free tips, but is by giving transformations and aha moments in every post that you create. Moments and shifts in their perspective that are going to help your audience's buying decision. That is going to get them closer to being a yes to what you're selling. So I want you to go beyond those five tips and what everyone else is doing, trying to go viral and focus on the potency of your content. So let me tell you how you can do that. Speak to the problem that your ideal client is going through. So how do we create these micro perspective shifts that are going to help attract premium clients and inspire them to buy? The first thing is understanding what people need to know in order to make a buying decision. They are wondering, I have this problem. I'm trying all these things. Why isn't it working? So that is your job. Number one, connect with the problem that they're experiencing on a day-to-day basis in a very clear way, be very specific, then empathize with their experience, then validate. It makes total sense that you're going through this. After all, this is what you have been taught. Now, tell them why what they have been taught hasn't worked. The reason why this hasn't worked is because here's what's been missing. Tell them what has been missing. Tell them why what they have tried hasn't worked. And finally, Tell them what they can do instead in order to create a different result. And what they can do instead is always related to what you help them with, to your offer, to you selling, to whatever it is that you're selling. When you create these perspective shifts, when you show people, hey, I know that you've been experiencing this, you've been trying this, it has not worked. Here's why. Here's what you want to do instead. You're helping them understand, oh, here's why the five tips that I read online did not work for me. You're going deeper. You're giving more potency. Instead of giving fluffy, cheap, fast food content that doesn't really get to the core of what it means to make a buying decision. It helps people understand why they should hire you because you understand the problem better than they understand it. And you understand the solution better than they can understand it. I'll give you a perfect example. You are here because you want to learn how to attract premium clients. You want to elevate your marketing to a premium level. And what I'm doing in this podcast is showing you, hey, I know that this is what you think you need to do in order to attract clients. These are the mistakes that people make. It makes sense that you think that way because you have learned it from all these places, but this is why it doesn't work. And here's what you want to do instead. I'm shifting your perspective. I'm giving you a new way to see things differently so that your mind becomes more receptive to seeing things in a new way that's actually going to bring you closer to where you want to be. The third thing that makes your marketing premium is marketing that focuses on high potency versus high production. You don't need to create 25 reels in order to attract clients and inspire them to buy. What is important is that you focus on these few things that I have taught you And you can create less content, but that has more potency that really helps people come closer to a buying decision instead of you feeling burned out by following trends and trying to target views and trying to go viral. That is not going to help your ideal clients get a transformation or get them closer to a buying decision. So focus on high potency versus high production. The fourth thing that makes your marketing premium is Instead of trying to be inspirational and try to make your audience understand you, premium marketing seeks to make your audience feel understood instead of you trying to feel 
understood by your audience. This is very important. So many of my clients come to me and they say, I feel so misunderstood. I feel like people don't get what I do. And I always see this part of them that just craving so deeply to be seen. When in reality, in order for us to feel seen, we must help others feel seen. Because when others feel seen with our marketing, that they're going to express their resonance. And that is going to create a feedback loop where you're going to feel understood. But it doesn't start by you sitting at your computer kind of frustrated because you don't know how to express yourself. It starts by you taking yourself or putting yourself aside for a minute and focusing on your client and thinking, how can I help this person feel understood? When you do that, your clients are going to feel seen by you and they're going to reflect that back to you. And then the whole loop is going to continue. So I know that you feel misunderstood and undervalued, but the solution to feel it understood and valued is to stand in the world of your clients and do your best to help them feel seen and understood with your content. And the last thing that I want to talk about when it comes to premium marketing is what are you doing with your offer? Premium marketing is focused on selling a premium offer, one or two offers that you sell consistently. You feel really grounded in your price. You're not wavering and doubting whether your offer is right, whether you should be selling it now. You're sold. You're fully sold on the value of your offer and you're selling it like it's the best thing in the world. That is the energy that has people feel safe in their buying decision because you are not trying to throw spaghetti at the wall, coming up with a brand new offer every five weeks. You are nurturing something that is long lasting, that people come in, they buy, they get results, others see that, and then the whole overflow of premium clients starts to happen. Now, there's more that I want to share about how to design a premium offer and how to sell it to create an overflow of premium clients. And that's why I've decided to create an in-depth training called the Premium Offer Power Play. In four days, I'm going to show you how to elevate your offer to five figures and sell with integrity while maintaining an overflow of premium clients, while elevating the high demand that you want to have for your offers. And all of this while keeping a very spacious calendar, because I don't want you guys to be overworking in order to attract premium clients. And I created this training because here's the truth. You can be the best coach in the world, but if you are not clear in the way that you package and sell your offer, you are going to feel undervalued and overlooked for many years to come. People don't buy the best products. They buy the products that they understand the fastest. That is why it's your job as a coach to learn how to package and sell your offer in a way that's so clear that moves you from the nice to have bucket in people's minds to the must have bucket in their minds. You cannot be a luxury in people's minds. You need to be a must have. I don't care if you sell self love, if you sell things that you feel like are not essential. It doesn't matter what your niche is. I have one of my clients, Rebecca, who just messaged me literally a few hours ago and said, I just sold my highest paying premium offer. No one has ever paid me this much. And she lives here in Israel, by the way, and she's making bank, selling these offers, selling her mastermind, and she teaches her self-love. Are people paying for self-love right now? Yes, they are. So it doesn't matter what you sell. It doesn't matter what niche you're in. There's a way that you can communicate the value of what you do in a really powerful way and sell either a five-figure offer or more of the current offer that you have. This training is going to help you sell more of what you have or sell more at the elevated price that you want. So here's what we're going to cover. The first day, we're going to talk about the four factors that differentiate coaches who sell five-figure offers and those who don't, regardless of their niche or their experience. And I'm going to help you apply those factors to your current situation so that you can start selling your premium offer with confidence. The second thing we're going to cover is the anatomy of your premium offer. So what are those essential ingredients that you need in order to have an offer that inspires people to buy with certainty and practically throw their Amexes at you because they know that this is the thing that they really want? And the third thing we're going to cover is how you can choose the perfect price for your offer. 
so that you can stand behind it with integrity and unwavering belief, knowing that the prize that you chose is a drop in the ocean for what clients are going to take from working with you. And you're going to feel so clear on that value and that prize that you maybe have been doubting or being a little bit wobbly on is going to feel so delicious in your body that it's going to feel so easy for you to show up and sell, whether it's on lives, on reels, wherever that is, or even on your sales calls, you're just not going to feel shaky in your boots when you talk about your price. And then the final thing we're going to talk about is something that I've never shared before, and that is how to use my elegant marketing and sales method to attract and pre-motivate premium clients, even if you don't think that you have them in your audience. I've never revealed this process before, and I'm going to walk you through it. And it's going to be so powerful. And on the last day, you're going to get me coaching you live on all the topics that we cover in those few days. It's going to be one of the most transformational trainings that you have ever attended. I am so excited for you to see these new concepts that I have been developing for you to feel so certain in your ability to sell more premium offers consistently so that you can have high cash months, so that you can have premium clients that show up feeling so committed so that you feel fully resourced in your business to show up for every client that's on your calendar and to show up for everything that you have not planned in your life because things are going to go sideways sometimes. And it's important for you to feel fully resourced in your business. So we start the training on August 26. Make sure that you sign up below. It's in the show notes. It's called the Premium Offer Power Play. I can't wait to see you there. All right, my loves. I'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in. Look, I'm going to be honest. I never liked leaving reviews or sharing episodes unless it's something that really moved me. So if this show resonated with you today, please leave a review. It would mean the world to me and send it to somebody who really wants to know the raw exposed truth about what it really takes to create a million dollar business and a delicious life. And as a thank you, I'm gifting you a free mini course about the three mistakes that coaches make that repel premium clients and how to fix it so that you can start attracting clients now. Check out the show notes to access it and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.